our heating in our house at home. You may say it's not sustainable. We have a wood stove, but it's a very high efficiency wood stove. And the wood that we get is wood that a neighbor out there um, gets from, goes up to the slash piles and cuts it out of there. It's going to be just torched in the middle of the winter. So rather than just having that happen to it, we put it, put it to use. Yeah. And we're working on uh, geothermal heat in our house. A couple of years ago, we had all the uh, lines put in the basement floor, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of money when we get money. We'll do the next step. I believe that you make things from around where you are, and so we have our garden center. We grow our seeds, and and that seed package is very little impact in the shipping because you can get a lot on a semi. But when you get plants out of California that's grown for a year, you're, that's going to take a lot more fuel and wear and tear on the roads and be more dangerous to people. So I'm proud that I'm growing something from seeds or from cuttings and delivering it 32 miles into Camelot. So we've done that for 36 years. We have fair trade where the people are using the resources around them. They're not shipping leather from Argentina to China and sewing um, cotton or whatever from India to China and then making something and then shipping it around the world. They're actually doing it and, and making a living where they are with what they have and producing that product as fair trade. No, you <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's a lot of challenges in living sustainably. One of them, of course, is the internal combustion engine and living out of town. It's very difficult to mitigate that. We insure the truck only the summer months and in the winter take it off the road. And we bought a car that is useful in so many ways. We have a station wagon Subaru, so we haul compost home in it. We haul plants in in it. We deliver... Uh, catering orders in it and we, you know it's just put to so much use so that's you know trying in a, as much as we can to mitigate that oil factor but you know waiting for something more sustainable and that is also within our uh, financial right, resources is another story well there's one that you mentioned um, is a clothesline you know you don't see them much anymore. We used to have a neighbor down the alley who did their laundry and hung it up on the line. It looked so nice, and I know some some uh, neighborhoods in town have bylaws that you're not allowed to have clotheslines. I mean, what sort of idea is that? Yes. I mean, there is free solar energy. If you have diapers, it it kills the bacteria in them and helps your baby not to have diaper rush. <laughs> and we do have a clothesline at home. Yeah, we've Very never good. had a dryer. No dryer. <laughs> Always compost. When you have a garden and it sort of starts on its own, all the leaves of things, you start finding more and more things that you can put into your compost here for sure. Coffee grounds and your tea bags and so on. I also look at a community coin where where the money stays here. So that will allow new businesses to start up because the money's circulating. So if you spend the money it should come back to you. Right. And the other thing about money, you could say, if it's not existing in Canvas yet, you could say, let's take 10% of the disposable income of everybody, if they would do this, and buy local. You'll put $12 million into circulation in Canvas, creating 300 jobs, which pay thirty to $40,000 a year with benefits, get away from the part-time, and it's sustainable, the 10%, and it's forever. So when Anita's up the hill getting at Windsor, Windsor is a Canadian company we buy some wood from them. And a lot of people would just say, oh, they don't have it, let's go to Home Depot. Mm -hmm. And that ships your money away. It's better to support Rona or Home Hardware. Mm -hmm. They're both Canadian. They pay into the social net. Yeah. You don't see that value until you're using Medicare or you're using roads in Canada. But you know, when you send it out to the multinationals, then you're just killing your own community.
Well, as, as I said, we're work, working on the heating of the house mm -hmm. and making it geothermal. Okay. And uh, we put insulation, four feet insulation into the house. And new windows and mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. that, trying, trying to keep it, you know, as, as low impact as possible. And as we're getting older, we're expanding our garden. <laughs> <laughs> it may be nuts, but uh, yeah. we bring it to the deli and we know what's in the food. And it's not, uh, a lot of people buy organic from California. Now in California, you can use Roundup, you yeah. know, and then plant your crop and it be registered organic. I sure. don't believe that's safe. No. So I, I don't have Roundup, I don't use Roundup. I refuse to participate in the buying of anything that might have Roundup in it. Or any number of other chemicals that are. For sure. So we make everything from scratch. <laughs> Well, one of one of our role models throughout whatever we've been doing has been Maude Barlow and her just ceaseless crusading for especially water, but in the rest of the environment as well. But water is the one thing that you know you can't live without, and uh, to keep water public, to keep water safe, you know, keep contamination out of our water, and keeping it public, you know, because once you sell it to a Foreign corporation, there again, you lose control. The prices, the cost of it all goes up, and usually, like like the mines, then when they start not making as much money as they think they should, they abandon it, and then we're left with the, yeah. the bill. So you know, it's always better to keep it in the public hands so we can keep an eye on what's going on. I don't believe in a no-win scenario. We can beat <laughs> this environment issue and make it sustainable. Oh, that's a quote from Spock on Star Trek. <laughs> but another one that I often think of, it, it's been attributed to many different uh, indigenous people. When the, when the last fish is gone and the last tree is cut and the last river is poisoned, we'll realize that we can't eat money. And the sick thing about money is created from nothingness. 